our awesome God. We thank you for coming inside instead of being wet. Uh, but we do praise God for the rain that is always needed and for each one of you gathered here. We are celebrating the sacrament of baptism later on in the service, and there will be a unison prayer uh, found on your uh, announcement insert, and uh, that will be a part of that service. And meanwhile, uh, we would also like to wish a happy Father's Day to all of our fathers and to all of our fathers and to our Heavenly Father who is the one who gathers us here. Saturday at the Emmanuel Lutheran Church, there will be a special program on the Holy Spirit from 9 to 11.30. And if you need more information on that, please uh, see me after the service. The offering this morning will go to the Salvation Army Community Food Pantry, and the loose offerings will go to them. Uh, and the other offerings just simply designate on an envelope or if you have your church offering envelope. The flowers this morning are uh, given, given by Jean and Dee Grace and family in loving memory of Orland and Louise Bible. We do have nursery care, which is down the long hallway and down to the left. Judy Miser will be doing nursery care. And immediately after the service, you are invited to stay in the assembly room for ice cream cones and coffee. We have uh, one more announcement from Tim Hayes. Good morning. Happy Father's Day, Dads. <laughs> this is an announcement that comes with a plea, okay? Um, many of you know the All Pirate Youth Choir. They have a smaller traveling group called the Cardinal Corral. The Cardinal Corral is starting their summer tour uh, the end of this week on Friday. They'll be in Kishokton for a rehearsal day here at the church and then starting off on their tour Saturday morning. Thus, the plea, we need housing for Friday night. Um, they're finished up here at 9 o'clock. They will have dinner. Um, they need places to stay and then back here Saturday morning at 3rd. We just need to feed and breakfast and spend some time. And, uh, their enthusiasm is contagious. It's great fun to house these kids. Um, you feel that you can open your home. It doesn't have to be a bed. It can be an air mattress on the floor. It can be a couch that pulls out or not. Um, anything. Anything works or used to anything. Okay? Just see me after work. I'll be in the assembly room. Um, if you're not sure, but you think you might out, see me, or find out, see me, and I'll give you my contact information for this. Okay? Uh, the other half of this announcement is that then we'll be back in Kishopton the Thursday after that. Thursday the 27th at Roscoe Church for a phenomenal concert. You don't want to miss that. No tickets, just show up. You won't, you won't um, be unhappy that you came to that concert, okay? Thanks. The community dinner will be on Wednesday evening at 5 30. Volunteers are needed. 4.30, and if you would like to drop off desserts, those are always welcome. Uh, you're invited to both see, as well as to invite others to come and join us for the community meal. Okay, the call to worship. Scripture is Psalm 134. You can find it on page 575 in your pew Bible. <coughs> come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord, maker of heaven and earth, bless you from time.
this morning. And it says, all I once held dear, built my life upon, all this world reveres and wars to own, all I once thought gain, I have counted loss, spent and worthless now compared to this, knowing you, Jesus, knowing you. Make this your prayer to look at Jesus this morning as we start out this morning in worship to him, to the King of Kings, our Lord Jesus this morning.
Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Hear these words of Scripture. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is above all and through all and in all. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of the one who called you out of darkness into God's marvelous light. Answer then to these questions. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God as parents, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Answer, I do. You affirm your faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love. Will you be responsible for nurturing your child in the faith and life of the Christian community? Will the congregation please stand?
welcome these children as part of the body of Christ, brothers and sisters together. Mm -hmm.
Leave if you feel like it's the right time, it's the right time. Your dad would have to use like listen to whatever when you was a baby. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Martin Luther was known for bouts of depression. And one of the things he used to do and said in Latin was Baptist. He assumed I, I am baptized. And he would remind himself that throughout all the difficult parts of life, we are still baptized no matter what happens. And that sustains us through everything else because there is nothing we can do that can ever change God's act of adopting us in baptism before, during, and after. For our time of prayer, a couple of announcements from uh, our church, and then I'll invite any others. Uh, we give thanks for both uh, Dave Bound and also Morgan Lawrence, who are recovering from medical procedures. Our prayers have been with Gene Grace following the death of his older brother, Edward, and also the family of Barb Cox, uh, who died on June 11th. We also want to give thanks for the years of ministry of John and Tricia Cornelius. This will be John's uh, last <coughs> sermon. Um, at least in the sanctuary, I assume he preaches to Tricia on a fairly regular basis. <laughs> and she does to him. But we certainly uh, have this as a wonderful day to remember uh, their time here at the shock. Are there other prayer requests this morning? Let us join in prayer. Lord God, we thank you for our baptism. Recognize all the times that water was a part of your ministry. We thank you for parting the waters as your people went into the wilderness. And we know at times baptism does not give us freedom from suffering, but rather grants us endurance. And so through the waters of our own baptisms, we have entered into a life of faith and discipleship. And we ask that you be with Avery and Sylvia in their special ministries yet to come. Guide their parents, parents, and grandparents. Be with others in their families to continue to help them to fulfill their vows. And may each of us fulfill our lifetime in their lifetime. With one another, O oh Lord, you call us to be the body of Christ. And so we share the burdens of the surgery, of therapies, of deaths, and grieving. We also celebrate the various ministries to which you have appointed each of us. So we ask your special blessing upon John and Tricia as they move on to a new chapter in their ministries together. We thank you for all that they have done for this particular community and for the ways in which you called them from their very first day and will undergird them until their very last day here. We thank you for calling us together as congregations of Jesus Christ and we pray for the other churches of our community as they also minister to the needs here. Bless those who are generous through the community food pantry, through the social witness program of the Salvation Army, through the different outreach programs of each congregation here, that together we may fulfill your commandment to seek justice, to do mercy, and to walk humbly with you as our God. For all of these gifts of your love, for the gift of your presence, for the devil upon our shoulder, for the waters of baptism, and the ministry of working side by side. We thank you in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
it's definitely good to see everybody in the house of the Lord this morning. Now, if we imagine really, really well, because I know we all have great imaginations, we can look up and we can see that sun shining outside, amen? But when we look up in here, we see the wonderful beauty that God has allowed us to have in this wonderful sanctuary. There are many memories here for my wife and I, and we'll keep them with us for the rest of our life. My daughter was married in this church. Right here on, on this platform, walking up the stairs that are put up in the front. And it's a moment that a father can never forget. So in my hearts forever, you will always be in our hearts, and always in our thoughts, and always in our prayers. But this morning, there's even more business at hand that needs to be taken care of. And that's the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's so important for us to hear the scripture of what our Lord Jesus says. And, and to, to live by what that scripture is. Today's sermon is called Got Heart. And I'm sure that many of you probably say, well, Captain, I got heart. I got it, baby. It's right here inside me, and I use it every day. But you see, there's, there's a little more challenges that go along with that. And a couple of things that I want to leave you with this morning. But first, would you bow your heads with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we, we thank you, God, for this time that we're able to be together again. And God, we just pray now as your scripture goes forth. May you just put it to the ears, the hearts, the minds, souls, and spirits of each believer here. And God, if there should be any person here that does not know you this day, I pray that they leave here knowing your son, Jesus Christ, this morning. Now, God, I just ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight. For in Jesus' name that I ask. Today's scripture is taken from the book of Psalms, 105, verses 1 through 5. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord in his strength and seek his face always. Remember the wonders that he has done, his miracles and judgments. May the word of the Lord go all blessed this morning. Have you ever heard that little thing that says, God heart, God, God melt, should I say, excuse me? You ever hear that back when you were growing up, God melt, and you see the television commercials that are everywhere on the TV? Well, today we want to look at whether or not we have, we actually got heart. And I want to look at it in a couple different ways. There's many ways today to talk about heart. The football player giving it all, his all on the field. We think about that so many times, don't we? We see it on national television, all over the place. We hear it on the radio, we see it in the newspaper. You know, the, in its front page newspaper headline all the time, what this sports person did or that sports person. And many times in, in our lives today, we get so consumed with all these other things that are going on around that we don't really understand what the true meaning of having heart in our life truly is. So today I want to talk about three things. And the first thing is a heart who rejoices. Amen? Does all of us here have a heart who rejoices? I pray the answer is yes. I see some nods. I see some, I'm not really used to talking in church, Captain. But it's okay here. It's all right. <laughs> Reverend John's not going to say anything. Neither will Reverend Bob back there. <laughs> Psalms 105.3 says, Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. If God seems far away, we must persist our search for him. We can't understand sometimes why we don't think that God is here and ever present in our lives. But that is the times in our life when we must persist and be obedient to him and seek his face even more every day. Hebrews 11, 6 says, And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Have you ever played? Now, I know there's some little ones here, so the little ones, you've got to pull your ears for a second. But have you ever played hide and seek with your child? 
or your grandchild or your great-great-grandchild and say, go ahead and hide, and I'll find you. I'll seek you. I'll look for you. I'm not going to let you down. I'm going to be there. I'm going to find you. Meanwhile, your wife and you are having coffee out on the kitchen table, taking those five minutes of quiet and peace that you can find. But you see, the thing of it is, is that God does know. When he says that he is going to seek you, when he says that he is going to look for you, when he says that he is there for you, he is truly looking for you. It is his wish that he has a relationship with each one of us, with everybody, and he is not going to take that moment to rest or to slumber. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. As in the Bible records, we see that those who truly seek will discover and they will rejoice in the Lord. So if you seek, you will have a heart that rejoices. Psalms 44, um, 14 through 18 says, You have made us a byword among the nations. The people shake their heads at us. My disgrace is before me all day long, and my face is covered with shame and the taunts of those who reproach and rebel me. Because of my enemy that is bent on revenge, all this happened to us, though we had not forgotten you or been false to your covenant, our hearts had not turned back. Our feet had not strayed from the path. A heart that rejoices in a heart that won't turn back. So that's the second one. A heart that will never turn back. A heart that won't look back when things get tough. A heart that will always be one after God's. In Psalms 44, 14 through 18, we see a battle weary Israel. Israel was defeated despite their faith. Verse 17 said, All this happened to us, though we had not forgotten you, been false to your covenant. And despite their obedience to God, in verse 18 it says, Our hearts had not turned back, our feet had not strayed from your path. Even the psalmist couldn't understand how God allowed this to happen. He did not give up hope, though. Even though he thought his suffering was undeserved. And many times in our life, we don't understand why the challenges come before us, why the suffering has to happen to us, why all these things that seem to snowball in our lives happen every day. But just like the Psalms, we cannot turn back. We must stay strong in our faith. There's a little chorus that's in your, your handout sheet, and it's, I'll not turn back. And in that, in that chorus, we're going to sing it right now. And those words that it says, If crosses come to me, if it should cost me dearly to be the servant of my servant Lord, if darkness falls around the path of duty and despise the Savior I've adored, I'll not turn back, whatever it may cost. I'm called to live in love and save the lost. I'll not turn back. I pray that for you today. That you will not turn back no matter what the challenges are. Because you see, there's a greater purpose for each one of us. Once we are saved, once we have Jesus in our life, and although we go through challenge and trials in our life, we are called to save the lost. There's a greater purpose. So let's sing this chorus this morning.
trials and challenges in our life, loss of a loved one, the disappearance of our youth, physical or emotional challenges, this is when sometimes it becomes easier to turn back instead of remaining strong and remaining faithful and looking to the Lord for answers to what is going on. Paul in Romans 8.36 says, As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to the a slaughter. Paul says that we must always be ready to face death for the cause of Christ. Therefore our suffering is not punishment, but it's a battle scar. A scar that shows our loyalty to the Lord Jesus Christ. So we want to know this morning that we have a heart who rejoices. That we have a heart that won't turn back. And a heart, finally, that will live forever with our Lord Jesus Christ. Psalms 22, 22-27 says, I will declare your name to my brothers. I will praise I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, Jacob, honor him, revere him. All you descendants of Israel, for he has not despised or disdained the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry from help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly before those who fear you. You will fulfill your vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. They who seek in the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will be remembered and turned to the Lord. And all the families of the nation will bow down before him. David praised God in the public here for his private deliverance. God saves us in quiet time. God is with us always. He wants to prepare our hearts, but we have to do our part. We have to prepare our hearts for Him. Just like when we come to, to worship Him together, we need to prepare our hearts, not just that day, that morning in the prayer that the preacher preaches before, but we need to prepare our hearts every day as well, what that day is going to bring, and how much strength that we're going to need to call upon from the Lord Jesus to get us through that. It's in those days that we don't call upon him, that we don't go to him. Those are the days that we can turn back. Those are the days that sometimes we think that our hearts will never be the same. But God, with him, with the Lord Jesus there, our heart cannot be changed other than knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. David praised God. Today, in our hearts, we need to praise Him. We need to come up in public and say what God is doing in our lives. It might be your brother or sister sitting next to you right now that needs to hear that. That needs to know some of the things that you've gone through and that God has gotten you through. And it may uplift them as well as help you. If you've ever had a baby, a grandbaby, um, if you've ever had a brand new puppy or a kitten, um, we can see sometimes that feeling of rejoicing, that feeling of knowing that new life that is there before you. We've been blessed to have a granddaughter that is now nine months old. And every day has just been a blessing. And to feel that feeling, to be there in that hospital, what an incredible thing to be able to see that. To know that someday that she'll have the opportunity to ask the Lord Jesus in her life. Just like with us, I'm sure each one of us can look around and see somebody that is close to us. That someday will have that opportunity. And you might be the one to bring it there to. But we have to have hearts that rejoice. That won't turn back. And that will live forever. David was like this. He wanted everybody's heart to live forever. David was called a man after God's own heart. And I pray today that you will be just as David, like David. A man after God's own heart. A woman after God's own heart. And guess what? And I'm sure you've heard your pastors say this many times. 
hate to make a lot of mistakes. Had a lot of challenges in this life. We're all going to go through that. We're all going to have our cross together. But because you have each other, because we have each other in the Christian church, in the church of Christ, we can get through that. And I, I pray today that your heart will live forever. I pray that we look to the Lord and that we rejoice in everything that he has done for us. Everything that is before us, we have because of him. Everything that we are, our teens, our children, all of our families. I pray this day that your heart rejoices over you. That you won't turn back in the difficult times. That you will look to the future with optimism. That you will look to it with the blessing of God. And knowing that you are his chosen people. And you are so special to him. That he loves you so much. And that there is nobody else on earth that knows you better than the Lord. Let us pray. Oh God in heaven. We just uh, pray right now, Father, that your word has gone out. That this day, Father, that our hearts are all after yours. We, we just thank you, God, for the ability to bring us through challenges, to bring us through a regular day, to wake us up in the morning, to be here in this church right now, Father, to be worshiping you and giving you glory. God, I just pray for each person here right now. You hear the hearts. You feel the hearts and the souls of each person here. And you know, God, what their need is. Whether it be emotional, physical, or spiritual. Just worn down and tired, Father, from the daily figures of, of the way the world is today. I ask for your blessing upon them. I ask for your hand to just freely touch them right now. And we pray, God, for a your spirit to fall fresh on each one. Be with their families. And we just ask for your, your, your hand upon all of us as we, we get ready to leave this place this day. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, there, there are a couple announcements, I think, and then we're going to have last time. I do have one. Huh? They're pretty different, huh? You usually do all our announcements before the court square worship, so... Um, this is a little unusual, um, but we have uh, a country, Southern Country Gospel singer coming to the Salvation Army. They're going to be there Friday, and he will be there Friday at 7 o'clock p.m. There will be another um, uh, service uh, in concert at Sunday at 11 a.m., um, but we have over 300 seats set up, um, so we're hoping to fill them all up. Come in. If it's, uh, there, there is no charge. Uh, the only thing is we ask that if you, you come with an open heart and, and ready to clap your hands and stomp your feet. Uh, Lance Folks has uh, one more announcement that we'd uh, like to make before John closes us with music.
first let him come to me and drink. John 7, 37. And then John 7, 33. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living waters. May the word of the Lord be blessed this morning. Thank, thank you so much, everybody. God bless you all. We're going to miss everybody.
I feel honored to play a very small part in this morning's very special worship service. Captain John Cornelius and I have spent countless opportunities with one another. Truly a friend in Christ, one whom I will sorely miss, but he's going to New Jersey. <laughs> so that's pretty good. Join with me in prayer. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food, I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink, I was a stranger and you welcomed me, I was naked and you gave me clothing, I was sick and you took care of me, I was in prison and you visited me. As I was reading these verses from the Gospel of Matthew, I couldn't help but feel that they were so appropriate for today's worship celebration. These words are so in keeping with the ministry and mission of the Salvation Army. This congregation has for years, for years, been one of the chief supporters of the Army. And I am confident that even though leadership will be changing in the matter of days, that our response as members of this fine congregation, that we will continue to show our support of this group. Let's pray. Oh God our Father, we give you thanks and praise for this opportunity which has brought us together on this Lord's Day. In a very special way, we now offer our prayers on behalf of John and Tricia Cornelius for, for their witness, for the countless, probably thousands of persons who have been reached by the Salvation Army, we truly give you thanks and praise. So, oh God, be with John and Tricia as they as they move on to a new opportunity. We are which they work, which they accomplished here, will continue under new leadership, and that they will feel that their presence and influence is being felt in their new charge. So bless and keep each person this day in your constant love and care. And to the Corneliuses, I would say, God's peace. And may God keep you in his love and care. Amen. Two things. Number one, go in peace. Number two, don't forget the ice cream. <laughs>